the 3M Podcast is brought to you by Craftsman Home Inspections, serving your home inspection needs in the Denver and Aurora metro areas. Find out more about Craftsman Home Inspections at CraftsmanColorado.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the 3M Podcast where we talk about the minister, the ministry, and me. We talk about God, we talk about how we can glorify God, and we talk about how those things relate to us. We just finished up a series on discipleship, and we're going to take the next uh, week or so to talk about that vision that we gave for the church Again, I'm not claiming it's the best vision you've ever heard, but it is a good one. It can be practically lived out in your lives and in your congregations. And so we're going to spend some time. We're going to have some special guests on the show, hoping to clarify these things and to bring some application. It will be fun. It will be educational. And I hope you'll learn something that will be beneficial to your walk with God. So we talked about um, a great commission vision and what this lifestyle might look like in the church. And we gave it four words to describe it. One, it being theological logical, two, sacrificial, three, relational, and then four, missional. And so for the next week or so, or several episodes, I guess, we're going to talk about it being theological, and then we'll work our way through the other three points. But we want to talk about this idea of the church being theological, and what does that mean for us? You know, I don't know if you're like me, but I know a lot of Christians out there who don't know what the word theology means, and to a lot of them, it kind of it kind of freaks them out because uh, they they just don't want to bring any kind of science or whatnot into their faith. And so I want to I want to dis, dispel or just get rid of some of those fears you might have looking at that word theology. And so we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about uh, the other ones also. But speaking of theology, the first question that might come to a lot of people's mind is what is theology. How does it relate to us? And so let's look at that word. Theology, really, it, it comes from two root words, one being theos and the other logos. And so it, it really means God, theos, logos being word or doctrine, something said. And so when we're studying theology or talking about the science of theology, we're talking about the study of God. As Christians, when we look at theology or we look into theology, we try to grasp who God is through the Bible. Theology, the type of theology we're looking for is biblical theology. So biblical theology is the study of God in the Bible. And so through our study of God in the Bible, we develop certain uh, beliefs. We develop our practices. We put the Bible together and we form what's come to be known as doctrine. There's another scary word for some people. What is your church's doctrine? And so doctrine really, that word is literally just means to to something that you're learning. Teaching, doctrine, the Bible encourages us to practice sound doctrine, to keep sound doctrine. And so doctrine, it's teaching or instruction, precepts, the things that we've developed through our study of God. And so that's what we're going to be talking about um, on the show and how that relates to us personally and in the church and why it's important to be students of theology, to be Bible students. We're called to be Bereans. You know, the Bereans were commended in the scriptures for being those who didn't just take, let's say, your pastor's words, but you heard those words and then you went to the scriptures yourselves and examined them to see if those things were true. Anytime you do that, you hear a doctrine or a teaching or a precept that's being taught on the radio or in your school or at your church or from a friend or in a a good discussion you guys have had about the Bible and you walk away from that and you go to the scriptures yourself and you begin to examine those things and you you don't just look at one doctrine in the Bible or, or one idea in the Bible or one verse, but you look at several verses throughout the scripture. So you start in Revelation and let's say you're talking about who is God. Well, you're going to start at the beginning in the book of Revelation. You're going to travel through the scriptures studying. You can use various tools out there. Um, 
you want to get a good concordance, you want to try, check out blueletterbible.com, great Bible study tools. You can search words and then read everywhere it talks about that word in the Bible. You can look up the original language meaning on that word, look at its root and, and kind of develop your ideas on scripture based off of your own studying. So we check those things based on various tools and whatnot. We'll talk about those um, in the episodes ahead. But you're beginning to develop your own biblical ideas of God because of your own studying in the scriptures. And so when you come to the conclusion after reading the Bible or reading the uh, New Testament that Jesus is not just some guy <laughs> born just just as normal as you and I, but he was born miraculously through a virgin and that he is not only the very son of God, but he is God in the flesh. You develop that thought based on several passages in the Bible throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Therefore, you are becoming a theologian. Now, hopefully that's the conclusion you've come to because that's what we would call sound doctrine. Some of those essential doctrines are the things that unite the church, that bring us together, those things that we agree on as a whole. Things like the Trinity, uh, Jesus being born of a virgin, the deity of Jesus, things like that, sound doctrines. So when we study theology, we're looking into who is God throughout the scriptures. We're studying God. And so theology, I think it was G.K. Chesterton that said, theology is that part of our faith that requires brains. Requires brains. I like that. And I may have butchered that, so you can look that up and correct me if, I'm, if I got that quote wrong. But it was something uh, very close to that. And so it requires our mind to be engaged in our faith. And that's encouraging. That we would have a, a word that we would be able to reason our faith when someone talks to us or has questions about us or questions whether God is real or whether God is actually loving. We have thought these things through. We've examined them in the scriptures and we can come to a conclusion on very many things in the Bible. And so that's, that's theology. If God had a doctrine... If God wanted to teach us something, if God wanted to, to make things plain, we seek those things out in the process of theology, in studying those things in the Bible. And so there's a little introduction to, to the first point in our Great Commission vision. You can find it on page 18 in the Minister, the Ministry, and Me, available at janewheels.com. Um, but first point in our Great Commission vision is being theological. The second point, we'll get to this in a few weeks, is sacrificial. That our mission as a people and as a church is sacrificial. Jesus sacrificed himself. And so to, to, to live for him in the church and in our communities and with our neighbors does require a sacrifice. It takes discipline to sit down with the scriptures, not just believing everything everyone tells you or in every book you read, you just take, take it as God's word, but you go to God's word and examine it. That takes discipline. You got to get the books. You got to, you got to read into them. You got to buy some study tools. Maybe I don't know. Or probably best yet, just sit down with your Bible and examine it and know it and be in it. That requires discipline and sacrifice. Same thing with our relationships, which brings us to the third point of our Great Commission vision is that as Christians and as a church, our mission to live on mission with Jesus will be relational. You know, it takes a, a sacrifice to set this time aside to be disciplined to say, I need to make room for other people in my life so that I can influence them and they can influence me and that we can love one another. To develop those relationships, to actually be the body, to invest in one another, that is the mission. Which brings us to our fourth point, that the Great Commission vision, our vision to reach the world around us is missional. That we are on a mission to know God, to live like God and sacrificial living and service 
to be relational, to get to know people. And why is that? Well, to be missional as a Christian is really to live your life in a way that glorifies God, that seeks God's good and God's fame, not our own. You know, I know a lot of uh, the, the pastors out there on the radio or these days or the Joel Olsteins are, are teaching us to to seek after our best life. But really, we are seeking after the life of Christ. We are seeking to answer his call, which is really to glorify God and to find our joy in him. That's where true satisfaction happens. And so with that... That just gives us a little introduction to what you can expect for the next several weeks as we kind of uh, look deeper into these these four ideas that we've developed um, in the, earlier in the podcast. And we're going to have guests. We're going to have Joel Wheelersburg, uh, pastor of Calvary Reach in North Aurora, Colorado. We're going to have Josh Reagan on the show, a student of theology and a really good guy. And then we're going to have Ryan Wilson. I like to call him Ryan Richie Wilson, but he's also a student of theology. Um, he's going for his master's. And so we're going to have some really good insights into this on answering the question, what is theology and how does it relate to our life as a believer? All right, we know what that means. It's time for another segment of the ODG, a word from an old dead guy of the past speaking to us through their writings. <laughs> Today's ODG segment comes from Diedrich Bonhoeffer from his book, Life Together, Discussion of Christian Fellowship. Check it out. It's, he said, Christianity means community through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. No Christian community is more or less than this. Whether it be a brief, single encounter or the daily fellowship of years, Christian community is only this. We belong to one another only through and in Jesus Christ. What does this mean? It means first that a Christian needs others because of Jesus Christ. It means second that a Christian comes to others only through Jesus Christ. It means third that in Jesus Christ we have been chosen from eternity, accepted in time, and united for eternity. First, the Christian is the man who no longer seeks his salvation, his deliverance, his justification in himself, but in Jesus Christ alone. He knows that God's word in Jesus Christ pronounces him guilty even when he does not feel his guilt and God's word in Jesus Christ pronounces him not guilty and righteous even when he does not feel that he is righteous at all. The Christian no longer lives for himself by his own claims and his own justification but by God's claims and God's justification. He lives wholly by God's word pronounced upon him, whether that word declares him guilty or innocent. And with that, that concludes another episode of the 3M Show. I'm your host, Jeremiah Wheelersburg. Follow us, subscribe to our channel on iTunes. You can just search The Minister, The Ministry, and Me Show. You can also look us up on Facebook, JN Wheels, on Instagram, JN Wheels. So yeah, follow us, subscribe, share, let people know that our show exists and help us reach the world with this content. Anyways, we look forward to talking again about theology through the next week. Tune in. We're trying to drop podcasts every Monday and Friday. I think we're going to do a little more than that, though, when we can. So keep your ear open. Give us your feedback in the comments section of the podcast. Let us know how we're doing. Talk to you soon.